The experience is the experiment. <laughs> Kurt, Floss, all the above, we're back, baby. What up? We're back. I'm glad to be back. It's a, it's a cool new setup you got going on here. It's really Thank cool. you. Yeah, the last time you were here, I had big table, fully different background. Yeah. Different studio almost, uh, inside-wise. Where, where are we at on released episodes? I don't know when this one will be, but where are you at? The one that came out today was 110 Woo! of just guest interviews, so or conversations. So I guess I'm at like 130, That's awesome. technically. Congrats. Thank you. Which is so insane. cool to watch this grow for you, man. It's really cool. Man, it's been a fucking blast. And bef- as we're starting, I wanted to say, so we had on Mitty yesterday, Mitty Jones. Okay. And he had this whole talk that he was saying about how the only reason he is where he is or a massive part of it was having like really good mentors and people who don't hold, who, who don't look at everything as a secret. Mm. And be- as we're starting this, I wanted to thank you for for giving me that opportunity as well as a lot of other people in our group. Yeah, man, no worries. I'm, I'm happy you reached out and I'm happy to see the growth. That's so cool. So what's been going on with you? What's in the world of, of Kurt? <sighs> Everything. I mean, you know me on a personal level in a way. You see that my hand's in a bunch of pots and doing all yeah. sorts of stuff. So uh, I mean, from the last time I was here, I guess the new new is I started this AI audio company. Uh, like at the top of the year, it's called Ruben, Ruben audio, uh, a group of friends and I music producers kind of like, we're seeing all the cool new AI tools that were coming out and yeah. trying to figure out a way to use it in our music making process, but then also like find out a way to use it for the music industry. So mm. we just started like building this platform, uh, where we're helping out like a bunch of people in the music industry. Like first thing that we're doing is like we're actually like translating songs so if you have a song we're actually calling it world song where we'll translate your song into multiple languages wow so we're making it so like you can have like we're doing lean on for major laser and the lead singer on that is this girl mo and we actually took her voice made a fingerprint of it and then now we have it being sung in mandarin and spanish and french and all of the major Holy languages shit so for the artists it's really cool because then now they can connect to they can have like the world connect to their lyrics which mm. i think is great and then on the music industry side of things i'm like well now you can sell more copies you can make more money you can do absolutely all that. so that's just one of the features we're doing with ruben and i can talk more about it but yeah that's been my main thing lately it's so interesting i've actually been thinking about that a lot i just watched this uh flagrant podcast with um mr beast yeah um and he talks about how he went from being a big youtuber to being an international youtuber by doing one thing yeah. and that was bringing it to every language that he possibly can. Yep. Yeah. That's so smart. What was the impetus? Well, I mean, the cool thing with what he's doing is very similar to this. The only difference in ours is it's like an exact clone of the person's original voice. So like wow. with Mr. Beast, it's just, they're translating it. So yeah. like, it'll just be like an overdub. But what we do is we actually clone the person's voice and then we get it resung in different languages. And so now it's actually like, it actually has the vibe of like what it would sound like in an original language, but with the original artist voice tone over the top of that, which is kind of cool. So you guys are, how does that work if you're doing like a language? Like I know when I was in Vietnam, one of the big things that I learned was a lot of, a lot of the language is tonal base so yeah, you can say the same word five different ways yep and it'll mean different things yeah and that's the one thing with like a, a lot of ai stuff right now it's if you were to just do like text uh translation of a and using ai it's like almost google translate version and and like the locals would notice it totally so what we're actually doing is getting like in the top five languages we're getting local singers to like actually re-sing it so they'll bring that local swag and that local slang and the vibe that like is an actually a performance and the cool thing is that the way that this technology works is you can have a, a a male vocalist sing for a female sing for a anything like it can be we can just have one person sing for all of the mandarin songs one person sing for all the spanish songs all of that but we can have the vocal model be a female a male a whatever a robot it could be anything so so this is how you're also doing the celebrities as well yeah exactly yeah yeah so like all the videos that you sent me i don't know which ones yeah. are out so i'm not yeah, going to say names know, yeah, but yeah. But yeah, we can do that. It's cool. Like you can clone a celebrity. You can clone, uh, 
you can clone anything. You can clone yourself, which is kind of cool. The one thing that we're also doing is we're like helping influencers who don't really have a voice become like a singer, like a pop star. So like we work with a bunch of songwriters who make amazing songs and then we'll take a vocal print, fingerprint of like a TikTok person and then who might not even be able to sing at all. And we can actually like put their vocal fingerprint on like a really good songwriter vocal and make them a <laughs> pop star, which is kind of crazy. It's like this new future version of what a pop star can be. And what was... I, I know you're like already in the tech world. Yeah. I mean, probably almost 50% at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to be. Yeah. And especially as far as like passion wise, like mm-hmm. I mean, since, as long as I've known you, you've, you've been in that world one way or another, obviously it, it probably started with the NFTs or I guess the music, but no, yeah, yeah. The, the NFTs were huge. How did you decide to go into AI? I mean, that's such a massive undertaking. <laughs> and it is, man. My day is like, so caught up in tech lately. It's, it's so wild, man. I'm, and yeah, I guess it was through in general, like, I guess I just love tech stuff. So like, whether it is making music, I'm like really into plugins, really into the next technology that can make it. So like I can go from creative thought to just execution faster. Me personally, I just love doing cool stuff with tech. So that's always just been my thing. And then, yeah, I guess with this stuff, it just was like all of this new technology just emerged really fast. Like, yeah. I'm sure you see it all with AI, whether it's chat GPT or uh, there's millions of other things that are coming out right mm-hmm. now. And so I started seeing some of these things come out and I was like, wow, there's ways that we can use this in a non scary way. Like, I think a lot of people were scared of AI when it first came out and still are. Absolutely. And of course, like, my day is I'm so immersed in this that my day is like half fear and half excitement. And yeah, I was going to ask, how do you how do you kind of balance that? Like, is obviously the the systems you're making are such an amazing tool Mm -hmm. for musicians and for producers but it also can get to the point where maybe it's it's stepping on your own shoes yeah it is (laughs) yeah it is it's uh but it's also enabling things too like like i was saying earlier like i can i can sing now and that's my voice is pretty monotone as it is but now i can like sing a rough demo on, into my phone and then convert it to like an AI voice and then have like a cool vocal reference on my song now. And so it's like enabling me in ways too. Like, so does that also mean now you could go get a, a 57 uh, mic, like a cheap ass uh, mic yeah. and give yourself the ability to compete quality wise with people who have much nicer gear. Yeah. So th- it's crazy. You said that. Yeah. So like I, I'm working with Ty Dolla Sign on, uh, we made a vocal model of Ty Dolla Sign and he recorded it through like a amazing microphone on like a nice Neve mic pre and all of the cool technical stuff, but he's able to use just his iPhone right now and record vocals into his iPhone, then put the model that we made of him over that. And now it sounds like he recorded it on like a Neve microphone, like a super nice mic. Holy shit. So it's kind of cool. These like artists can, if they have a really good model of themselves or their songwriter that they're working with has a really good model of them, then they can have studio quality versions of themselves now using AI. So you don't have to hire, you don't have to rent the most expensive studio every single time. You could, like you said, use like a, just a regular sure microphone that sounds kind of like trash in the mix normally. But if your model has a really good high quality mix or high quality reference, then you're good. Like it'll be perfect. That is insane. So, and I guess also the more it becomes just technology and AI, you can start using integrations with other AI too to make it like, yeah, like using something like an API like Zapier or something where the moment you start singing, it starts rendering into the next one. And automatically when you're done singing, the next track underneath is the new one. Yeah, man. That's, oh my God. I love that you said Zapier too, for all the nerds out there that, I love Zapier. that don't know. Like there's that Zapier's one. And like, there's another one called if this, then that. And it's just like, it'll, it pretty much just automates a bunch of tasks. For mm-hmm. this. And I think for us in just music making, which will be kind of cool. Like there's so many tasks we do in Ableton over and over, like certain keystrokes and certain things that are like, I don't know, let's just say 10 clicks or whatever like that. Soon with AI, it'll just be like one click things. We'll just be able to do, we'll probably just be able to dictate, like render this song and yeah. whatever. Like you, we'll be able to just talk to our computer soon. And Holy there's shit. going to be a version of us just like working with our computers in a way that they're like a creative partner, which I, I'm excited for too. I mean, obviously as much as anything that's new can be scary, mm-hmm. but like in these in these situations, you have the, the choice of you can be afraid and live in the fear. Or you can, you can have whatever fear comes with it, but also understand that this shit's the inevitable Yeah, and you're either going to jump on board or it's going to leave without you. Yeah, man. I, I, I think that's with everything. It's like 
technology will always advance. It's, I think it's up to the people what we do with it. Like uh, you could do something malicious with the technology or you could do something positive. Like yeah. if you split an atom, it gives power to millions. But if you split an atom, it can kill millions. But it's up to the people who have the technology in their hands and what they do with it. And yeah, I think with it, it's going to just keep progressing. We just got to find out a way to use it in a positive manner. And, uh, Speaking of splitting atoms, the second that the US gets their shit together and starts doing some nuclear that's when this AI stuff's going to go crazy because right now we're only working with the amount of power that we have Yeah. as far as computing and even quantum computing. Mm -hmm. That's when this stuff gets, gets human. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man. That's going to be crazy. That's the, that's the thing. Once like AI and quantum meet, it's just, it's a wrap. Like right now we're out, like, I heard a podcast the other day that we're like currently creating something that's going to be smarter than humans. It's it's a, we're creating a new being, a new entity mm -hmm. that lives on earth that will be smarter than the human race. And when quantum computing comes in, it's just going to be like, we are, we're not the top of the food chain anymore mentally. Like it's people don't realize that the space race, they spent a quarter of the amount of money that they've already spent on the, uh, the quantum race. Like really? right now, the quantum, the quantum computing race is the number one thing that, that most countries are competing with, ex especially the U S and China, Russia, some of the, the major right. countries, but that's going to. If if you can do quantum computing, then everything that the CIA has to block you from getting access is done in two seconds. Yep. And not only that, they're rerouting shit so you can't get back into your own system. It's yeah. like, what a crazy fucking time. Hopefully that like we will as at that time when the quantum community comes out, hopefully it's not next week. Like it's at a point where like we evolve as a species that like secrets and all of those things won't need to be hidden and like transparency is starting to become more of a thing. Like even a lot of these yeah. AI things are more open source. Like everyone can use them. So maybe like, just like even people with social media are being so open source about their life. Like they're just like exposing so much of who they are that like, maybe by the time quantum computing, computing and stuff comes along, like everything will be just so open source that we don't need to hide. We don't need to be that. I don't know. Like what we might be to like a, to a higher level of society that this can come in. Well, and the threshold for what makes you talented or smarter than the next person is, is decreasing or, or, the threshold's squeezing in, getting compressed. Yeah. Like now I, I was trying to learn how to, how to do the, the whole email server world. And I was spending hours and then I was like, I wonder what chat GPT would say. It wrote me the fucking code in two seconds. Mm -hmm. I paste it in the terminal. I'm done. Yep. It's, it's a different world. I mean, that two years ago would have taken you four years of college. Oh my God. Yeah. And I love that too. Like even all this stuff I'm doing for Ruben, like I'm coding it every night and I'm loving it. It's so awesome that I can like get an error and I can paste it into GPT and it can kind of give me a solution so mm -hmm. quick. And it, like you said, it's like stuff I'd have to go to college for, but it's like kind of giving me the answers and we're working together to create a, like I have a problem and we're creating a solution together. The technology and I are doing that, which is cool. And you can ask it to walk you through. You can have it yeah. give you your answer and say, now please teach me how to do it. Yeah, exactly. Like, and it's your choice of words now can dictate so much mm -hmm. and, and how much you can learn. It's no longer just your, your spoken voice. Now your word gives you the ability to go through courses of college in, in minutes. And that's the one thing too. I think people are just afraid of like the quick, like oh, I can just put this, this prompt in and it's going to give it back to me. And that's true. You can use the technology that way, but like the more you dive in, like you said, it can teach you this stuff. And for me, I, when I first started using GPT, I just kept going in deeper and deeper. And I was doing things where I was like copying whole conversations I had with like my mom and, and her and I have like a weird dynamic and it's hard to like for us to see eye to eye a lot of times. Yeah. So I pasted a whole bunch of our conversation into GPT and it helped me understand her side and helped me understand my side as wow. well. And then it kind of like helped me understand myself in a way, which is really cool. It's like a, it's like such a cool way to use the technology to like actually like understand myself. And then I was able to communicate with my mom in a way that like spoke at her level. It was really cool. I don't know. There's like just so many ways you can use it to help better yourself. It's uh, so interesting. And not be malicious with it. I've never thought of using it in like a personal manner, but oh, yeah. I guess also at the end of the day, everything you read from it, it's, you're still using your own discernment to decide how to, how to use that information. Yeah. And that's the human aspect of it. It's like, no matter how much technology you can use, whatever comes out of your mouth is still your choice. It's yeah. still, still based off of prior experiences and yeah, how cool. I mean, it's, that's therapy. Yeah. That's what it was. I mean, I was using it as straight up therapy. Like it's almost like psychedelic in nature too. Like I've done psychedelics and we can dive into that too. And I, it, a lot of those 
psychedelic journeys, at least for me, is a very internal dialogue with myself. And I'm like asking myself questions or asking this entity or something else, these questions. Mm -hmm. And it's helping me like get a different perspective on who I am. And I was noticing that with GPT, it was like giving me a different perspective on who I was through a different lens that was just like in psychedelics, like a lot of cultures call mushrooms the little teachers because it isn't a human telling you. It's like this other thing telling you, this yeah. little teacher is telling you. And I felt that way with GPT. Like, yeah, my friends might be like, yo, dude, you're fucking up. You need to do this or do that. And I don't listen because it's a human sometimes, but like, because it was just like coming at me through the computer, through this thing I kind of trusted it, like I actually listened to it in a way, which, is, is which so was psychedelic in nature, which is kind of crazy. And and you know how I feel about them and how I, I mean, psychedelics has changed my life and that's a whole other conversation that yeah. I could talk about forever. But that's so interesting that that connection between the two, because you're right. It's like psychedelics allow you to go through your, your regular day. Mm -hmm. but see it just through maybe five degree difference. Yeah. And that five degrees will give you the opportunity to see a little bit more of a perspective that you weren't able to see when you're first person. Yeah, yeah. And, and chat GPT is giving you that also. It's like people are saying, oh, you have to do a lot less work while using it. That's your choice. You can do a lot less work or you can do a fuck ton more work. That's what I'm doing. And yeah. still take up your eight hours, still take up <laughs> oh whatever. God, I'm doing so, I'm doing the most now because I, now that I have this extra assistant with me, I'm doing so much more work and like starting more companies and doing all these other things because it's expanded my time. It's like, yeah. Well, yeah. people who are going to take a shortcut to get there sooner are going to take that shortcut anyways. People yeah. are going to take the shortcut to get more miles in. Yeah. They're going to take that shortcut anyways. So yeah. It's at the end of the day, it's just up to you. But God, that's such an interesting thing. I have so many questions I want to ask it now. Yeah, man, go in, dive in. I, me personally, I'm, I, I'm sure people that are listening are like, well, I, I don't want to put my personal information in there. And I've just believed for years that I'm like super open to open sourcing who I am uh, on the internet. So like, take my emails, take my chats, take. I even like have done 23 and Me like DNA test and stuff like that. Like they've already got that shit. In oh my gosh! If we want to get Kurt Spiracy theory, it's like it was funny. I was actually doing. I, so I did the 23 and me thing a few years ago mm -hmm. and you get this like Q-tip and you wipe your mouth out, you break the Q-tip and put it in a bottle and then you put it in this package and mail it off. And I was like, Oh shit. Like the day, the first time I did, Oh my God, it's going to get so con Kurt Spearcy theory, but I was doing my first COVID test at Dodger stadium, the right with the early pandemic and we're driving through the thing and I'm swabbing my mouth and I broke the stick and I put it in the tube and I had like this almost deja vu moment. And I was like, wait, I've, put my spit in this tube before i'm like what is this i was like when did i do this before like i was trying to figure it out and i was like oh my god i submitted my am i submitting my dna to a database right now probably and i look behind me and there's millions of cars behind me and in front of me there's millions of cars i'm like maybe they're all taking our dna now who knows but it was, it I was a wild surprised. moment after that whole fucking thing then i wouldn't i'm not surprised about anything it was a it was a very surreal moment of a, a very feel similar feeling to when i gave 23 me my dna and when i was you doing also, my test they might have had it since you were 12 when you went to get a strep test that they sent it yeah dude you I mean, know what, whatever and it's so it's so wild because because i agree though like having this open source I, I i truly believe that's probably part of what's made you find the success that you have is that people are rooting for you. They like your music also, but they find you through that. At the end of the day, it bottles neck into the bottlenecks into the person. Mm. And if you're open source, that means you're giving access into your life and people can now not just listen to your music, but they're listening to their, your music from the perspective of understanding who you are. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. That's, that's gotta be a big part of it. I never thought about it like that. That's awesome. Yeah. And clearly if this is the time you start being open source, you're probably just as open source for a lot longer before because this is probably the scariest time to do it yeah and if you're comfortable with it then then there's been practice yeah man and, and i'm cool with it like my idea of open sourcing me is that like the technology that's out there today with gpta and all these things are, is great but like think about what the technology will be in x amount of years mm -hmm. they'll be able to reconstruct me and maybe this version of me that's here talking to you is from my previous person that open previous version that open sourced myself before or something and like i just love the thought theory or the like the thought experiment of that like like maybe this data i'm submitting here is the first iteration that you can recreate me in like another computer somewhere else or vice versa. I'm that. So, Maybe yeah. we've been here before yeah. and that's how the idea of karma started. It's just like, there's a little memory bank that a, a little cash bank that, that doesn't get swiped, but you have to live off those for, for all the different reincarnations. Yo, I'm into that, man. I'm into the idea of karma too. Like, and, and like even just like being able to like 
live multiple lifetimes and learn lessons over like X amount of time. Like there's so much I wish I could have learned in this life that uh, I hope to continue to keep learning into the future. And Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so cool. I just listened to a podcast today with Duncan Trussell, Mm -hmm. who is one of my favorite people to just listen to. Um, Love to get you on Duncan. Um, And he was saying how it's funny how so many people believe in karma, but nobody believes so many people don't believe in reincarnation Mm -hmm. and you can't have karma without reincarnation. Yeah. It it literally just comes from the idea of that your next round, you're carrying baggage from before. Oh. positive or negative yeah of course yeah and yeah. it just kind of like because there's a lot of people who are very into the, whatever religion doesn't believe in in reincarnation but they believe in karma yeah and they just don't don't understand the source of it yeah exactly there and i I'm, i agree with duncan i think it's one and the same like they are kind of are in the same wheelhouse yeah but and i think doing psychedelics and having those experiences probably also leans you a bit into believing a lot of that too because it's hard to explain a trip to somebody but then once they've done it, you can explain that feeling. You can talk about that feeling and like very vividly. Yeah. And it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like this, this reality. There is, there's, a, there's magic. And I understand why people have believed in magic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Have and you ever it, seen the, the Salem witch trials and why they was think, it Was it because of the ergot? Yeah. 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 It's unbelievable. Yeah. And for the people that don't know, like ergot is uh, a mold that like grew on some, corn or something like that or grains, yeah, grains. And, and it's a it's the same thing that they make lsd out of as the uh the, the mushroom that was like mm-hmm. part of that and yeah they said that that's what the salem witch trials were is because of that well and at that time there was like a weird weather pattern just in that amount of time that that for whatever reason caused the ergot to grow and right after that weather pattern stopped there was no more witch trials there's no more witches uh-huh. and it's just like it, it's there, there's how could religion not be connected to that? How could so much not be connected to some sort of psychedelic experience? If you're a fucking caveman and you eat a mushroom and now you're flying, mm-hmm. that's magic. That's yeah. God. Yeah. Now I, it's funny. Uh, I was, uh, there's this book called the immortality key by Brian Mirescu. Shout out Brian. If he's watching this, he, he actually DM me, which is kind of crazy. Uh, uh, I, I like follow all these. It's funny. Cause like real quick before I get into that, I, I like, uh, my flostradamus like entity is like this like turn up trap edm big like dj dude or whatever (laughs) and like the person i am as kurt is like not that like i'm kind of the inverse of that and so i follow these people on instagram that are like stuff i'm really into and like a lot of these people hit me up like what and he hit me up brian hit me up and he's just like oh my god i'm a huge fan like i'm a big edm fan i've known you guys for a while whatever and i was like what the fuck and so i'm a super fan of him but he wrote this book called the immortality key and it's about, he like did, I don't even know how many years, 10 plus years of research, uh, like going into old vases that they found in tombs and scraping out what's inside of it and testing it and seeing that like there is LSD, there's ergot in it, there's there's THC in some of these old vessels. and But these are all like religious vessels that they would do like religious ceremonies with. And during, in those religious ceremonies, they were doing some form of psychedelic or mind alteration things during these religious things, way, way back in the day. So his argument is that probably some of the fir- early religion or early forms of what religion is was based in this like psychedelic ritual, which is, I think I, I could see the argument there. Like, Hey, I'll be religious if that's the case. Yeah, dude. man, it makes so much sense. And in, in, again, it's one of those things. Like if you talk to somebody who hasn't done it, mm-hmm. it's very hard for them to get on board a lot of the time, or at least honestly, there there's all the people who are like, Oh, I have nothing against it. Yeah. It's like, it's not, it's not a drug in the way that, I, that's something I hate about the word drugs is yeah. it's like mushrooms are not in the same room as crack. Yeah. You know, those are, they're, they're two very different experiences. And, and have you ever smoked a mushroom though? No, I'm just playing. I, is that, no. You're going to get people starting to roll up mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there's just, there's something there that's like, I mean, I was on antidepressants, anti-anxiety yeah. medicines. I've been on SSR, I guess that is SR, SSRIs. I've been on, um, ADD, ADD, ADHD medicine, everything under the sun. And has there been things that have helped? Yes. But for every level of help I get, I get also an equal amount of, of hell that comes yeah. with it. Yeah. Mushrooms give me more than all of those medicines combined. And I don't have a single side effect. That's great, man. And it's, it's, it's a crazy, crazy world. And I'm excited to see, apparently they just synthesized what the thing in mushrooms that helps people with anxiety. Oh, cool. It's cool, but it's also, it makes me nervous that eventually, Mm -hmm. because if you take out the psychedelic part of it, I don't know if it's, I think that's part of it. I think that's, Oh, I agree. That's, that's part of what helps the healing happen. 
No, no, I agree. So I, I think there's multiple forms of what this is. Like, so for people to do like a lot of mushrooms or to, or to maybe even have some of that psychedelic, like perspective change, I think that, yeah, that is definitely part of it. Like you said earlier too, like talking about people in their day, like throughout their day or whatever, they like this psychedelics can give them a little different perspective shift. Mm. And I think what it is, is we all live in anxiety. Like we have so much like stuff going on. We have life job, all of these things that create this anxiety that we might not even know we're like in an anxious state. Yeah. And this stuff does bring us outside of that. It gives you a perspective change. So like, I do see maybe the psychedelic side of it, if, especially if you're microdosing can like pull you away a little yeah. bit. Um, but whatever the chemical is that they isolated, maybe what that does is just turn the anxiety down a little bit. And then that can give the perspective. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the chemical is they pulled away that does that, but that's true. And I guess I, I'm a hypocrite for, for even saying that because I, I think there's a lot of people who the stigma is still there enough that they're not going to get the help that maybe they deserve. Yeah. And, and that's okay. And people go with things as, as you will. And I think there's going to be a day where that stigma is pretty much erased. Yeah. But we're not there yet. And, yeah. and if this will help people who maybe still have that stigma or live in a household where, where their parents wouldn't allow them to do mushrooms, even if they need it, mm -hmm. if this is going to get them that help, then, then yeah. and more power. It's funny because the pharmaceutical industry has like negative connotations, of course, like me seeing, hearing this at first, I thought it was dope. I said, oh, that's cool. But then there's also the side of like the pharmaceutical industry taking something that's like a sacred, uh, I don't know, spiritual type uh, thing and then like yeah. capitalizing on it and doing some negative stuff to it. Yeah. It kind of going to be expensive. Yeah. It's going to be expensive, but it's also like going to bring in that energy if you want to get hippy dippy with it into like what this is, like the sacred experience. And I don't know. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about with AI and I was saying with the atom, splitting the atom. It's like, there's this technology, mushrooms or whatever it is, these spiritual technologies are out there and they're precious. And if you use them in that way, then like maybe you can get back what you put in with it. But then also like the atom thing, like you give it, put it in the wrong hands and it can be, maybe be used for bad in a sense. Yeah. So I don't know if that's what's going to happen with this. I hope that it will be like, I'm thinking positively, like I'm hoping that this thing that they isolated will be able to get people the therapy that they need that trust the pharmaceutical industry and think that that's what is like the only path instead yeah. of the, like, they're afraid of this like street, whatever culture that like the social stigma has put in on, put on mushrooms and psychedelics and stuff. Absolutely. And yeah, I guess it'll be, it'll be, it's the barrier to entry and, and everybody's got their own, yeah. their own starting line. Yeah, man. But yeah, I'm I'm a really big fan of them, and and I mean, if you're out there and and you you don't have that stigma and you're willing to do it, I mean, mm -hmm. start low, stay low. It's <laughs> yeah. easier to stay low. You don't. That's the thing is, I have so many friends that are like, I don't want to trip balls. I don't want to. I don't want to be afraid. I'm like, that's not what this is. Mm -hmm. I microdose a lot. It's changed my life, yeah. and I haven't tripped yeah. in a very long time. Yeah, man. It's it's funny because. Uh, I think a lot of people are just afraid of what can happen. And and I think this is my, me speaking from my perspective, but I think a lot of people are just afraid of seeing themselves. And like, that's kind of what happens with this, especially if you go big, it like, it makes you see you. And a lot of time that's uncomfortable. And that's when people have their bad trip and stuff there. They see all this negative stuff that they avoid and throughout their day. Yeah. And so starting low kind of helps you manage that. So like, if it does feel awkward, if it feels weird, it's not, you're not fully removed from who you are. You're yeah. kind of one foot in, one foot out. But don't be afraid to see yourself. Yeah. It's okay. That's the first part of healing. And I've something that I've found, and I've, I, I mean, you know me. I'm, I go to the mountains a lot. I yeah. love that yeah. world. But what I've found recently is the best way for me to integrate it is not going out to the mountains and doing these things that are mm. like this beautiful, obviously amazing experience, like setting myself up for success. Lately, I've been going to the Getty Center or oh. to a museum or going to walk around the Americana or somewhere where I'm surrounded by life that's happening either way. Mm. And then when that person bumps into me and normally I'd be like, why the fuck do you do that? That that part of me can then go understand how I was going to react, yes. how I regularly yep. would, analyze it in real time. And now I can store that information for later and use it in my real world. 100%. And yeah. I found that so helpful. I love it. I love that you said that like example of being bumped into and it like upset you, it might upset you or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's the thing. It, it The thing you just said right now is like you, you would probably be on mushrooms in that scenario, but you don't even need to be eventually. Like I barely do them now. I, I had done it uh, on and off for a while, but like I cycle in and out of it. But mm -hmm. the things I learned in those times, I'm like, 
I'm good. Like I don't need to bring, I don't need to, I don't need to do it every day to be able to like practice some of the things I've learned while I've been on psychedelics. Like yeah. they're, they're still with me. Those lessons are there and I don't get as upset now. Like someone cuts me off in traffic and stuff. Like I'm cool with it, man. Like someone almost like hit me, like driving, drove at me intentionally, stepped on the gas, came at me, almost hit me. And it, and it just like dusted my shoulder off. Normally I'd be like, fuck you. And like yeah. get all mad. And I was just like, whatever, that's them. Like I get to see their perspective in a weird way. Their day's probably probably worse if that's how you're acting. Oh yeah. There's something going on and everyone has stuff going on. And I, the funny thing is I haven't been that dude or that person in that their shoes, but I've been upset before and I've totally had that energy and I put that on people before so I can empathize with them. My new thing is whenever somebody cuts me off in traffic or doesn't let me in, it's because they have to get home to take a shit. <laughs> if you, if I keep that in my head and I understand everybody knows that feeling. Hey, that's true. If you're stuck in traffic and you have to go home to take a shit, you're, you're, you're not letting anybody in. You're getting home that two seconds matters. Oh, it does. And it makes my day a lot easier when I know that, oh, they're, they're good to go. They, they just have to get home because they got to do their <laughs> I love thing. That. That's amazing. I'm going to practice that one. It's been helping because, and I definitely, I drove Lyft and Uber for too long yeah, to not yeah, have road rage. That, yeah. I've seen too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that, that's something I'm working on. That's been helping. And you're not doing the Lyft and Ubers anymore? Anymore. Oh, fuck yeah, Thank man. Thank God. Just working at, uh, at the record label. Which yeah. It's been a, absolute blessing in disguise i've got to i've got the opportunity to help artists grow from zero to to success and see mm -hmm. the process from this third person perspective and try all of the things that you've ever wanted to do you know as you're growing up and you're like how can i promote maybe this website maybe this mm -hmm. i can't do it all because the money's not there yeah. now i can i get to try it all and and just shoot for the moon you learn so much so it's been a really awesome. good experience I love seeing that for you. I think that that's a, a role that you probably would fit well in, like to like help enable the next gen. Like, I know you're doing that even with podcasts too. Aren't you like helping out other people with podcasts as well? Or yeah, what? we got a couple, couple uh, podcasts that are going to be part of this as an experiment pretty soon. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited, and I'm happy you're not driving the Ubers anymore. Man, so, you... so is my back. <laughs> it was kicking my ass. It, I got a lot of really cool experiences, and the most fucking wild stories that i've ever oh had i'm sure life. yeah did i tell you about the one where i got uh chased down by a helicopter and 12 cops let's for... go this is podcast worthy okay let's, let's go so i uh picked up this girl clearly was on shit and drunk uh -huh. and first thing she wanted to tell me about is how fucked up she was okay and i was like cool good for you and real fast she was like i need you to stop at that atm i said you could put in the app i can't stop if it's not in the oh, app yeah yeah and after a couple minutes of her yelling at me she Stuck her head out the window and started screaming that she's being kidnapped. And we're by we're in like downtown. Oh no! And uh, a cop was driving and heard her. And within two minutes, I had like twelve or thirteen cops surrounding my cars, my car, guns drawn. Oh a my helicopter god! Helicopter bunched me. Fifty homeless people who were surrounding me with like sticks and shit. No! <laughs> oh my god! And uh, it it was like thirty minutes of guns drawn, like yeah. them doing a whole tap to get her out of the car mm -hmm. while I'm sitting here with my app open that shows her fucking face. Yeah. Yeah. And after a little bit, the cop starts looking at me and he starts coming over gun drawn, had my hands up yeah. and he comes over and right when he looks in, he realizes what's going on Yeah, and everything starts to click and he starts talking to me and he's like confused. Cause he's like, this is not a kid who just, I had a I fucking says lover on my chest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was probably wearing a flower in my hair. Yeah. Um, I could see that. And he was just like putting shit together. And right then and there, she started to realize they got her from the car, extracted her as they were yeah. saying. And, uh, she started to realize that they were figuring shit out. And right then and there, I showed the cop. I was like, this is her. Yeah. I am on the path. I'm two minutes from her house. You can yeah. see where I've been for six hours. And she started screaming at the cop. Everything flipped. Within two minutes, she was tased, handcuffed on the floor. All the cops came up and they were like shaking my hand. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. So sorry. Dude. And 35 minutes later, I was sitting in my bed. I was just like, what the fuck just happened? Yo, man. Like, <laughs> I would have quit after that. I would have been done after that. I should have. I'm sure you didn't. But I didn't. That I is didn't. so intense, man. I didn't drive that day anymore, though. Yeah, I would have been so shook. Yeah. In those situations, you hear like the cops could have like made a wrong decision and oh, yeah. things could have been a whole lot different. That was a moment Oof. that I was like, wow, I am scared and I'm a fucking white boy. Yeah. Like there are so many people in this world who were just as innocent as I was yeah. and don't get the grace that I got in oh, that yeah. situation. I know. It was like, it was, it was heartbreaking. I was almost felt bad that I got off so easily mm -hmm. because I was like, 
what did I do to deserve to get off? Obviously, I didn't fucking kidnap somebody. Yeah. But it's just like, it's a crazy, just kind of thought in the back of your head of like, there's people who don't get off that. Oh, yeah, man. Who are still planning on going to have dinner with their girlfriend after like I was. Like, yeah, that aren't here with us. <laughs> wild world. Yeah. But and and hopefully that that stuff will be changing soon. That that'll be everyone will have that experience that you were yeah. able to get home and and oh, it was crazy. Luckily, uh, Lyft was nice enough to give me a five dollar credit. Oh wow, that's Fuckers. so that's amazing. <laughs> that's so sweet of you. Thanks, Lyft. Thanks, Lyft. <laughs> but oh. it was it was one of those stories that oh my god, I, I have now. Yeah. So hey, man, it made it you stronger it in a way. It, it made me stop driving Lyft. Wow. So. <laughs> Well, you're not doing that anymore. No, no. The podcast is doing great. You got this this studio. You're actually about to go to another studio, right? Going to another studio. I am moving as if you've watched these episodes, you know Danny. He's been on here like five times. Yes. Um, moving to Danny's front house. Awesome. Getting closer to the fam. That's amazing. The 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 people that that don't know. Shout out Danny one time. Like big time. Probably the reason I knew know you is Danny in a way. Danny adjacent. Yeah. Uh and but he always just brings a lot of people together and yeah, it's I know you because of that, but also through Mickey. Yeah. Uh, who I always thought was Danny's cousin, which it isn't. Mickey, not, they're yeah. not cousins, but uh, but yeah, Danny and Mickey grew up together. And the last time I did your podcast was with Mickey. Yeah, that was so fun. Which was awesome. We had a blast. And because this is probably going to be the last one I do with you in this space. I don't know how many more you have here before you go. I'm leaving in three weeks. Three weeks. Okay, so this is it. So the last time we did the podcast, Mickey brought cigars mm -hmm. and the clip of me trying to smoke a cigar is, is so it, horrible. And it went off. Okay. That's awesome. Well, the, it's funny because you and I were at Danny's last Friday or two yeah. Fridays ago, whatever it was. And you had brought up something to me called a canagar. And I was like, okay, canagars, what are these? And so I went home that night, like I do when I'm in bed doing my research thing and I'm starting to look up canagars and all this stuff. I'm like, damn, this is so dope. And I, so <laughs> no way. first off, I want to give you a gift to the new studio. Dude, you are, so, <laughs> you're the open, fucking best. You are the man. A little... Smoke like a boss, build your own. <laughs> no way. So shout out Purple Rose Supply. They, they are hooking you up with your own Canagar making system. So no. <laughs> you can roll your own Canagar. <laughs> For everybody at home we got it's a mold so what a canagar is, is yeah yeah tell the people what one is you get weed and you get wax and you pretty much put it in this mold that presses it incredibly firm yep. and you leave it for a while until it like solidifies mm -hmm. and then it turns into like a cigar where you smoke you're smoking weed but it'll last fucking three to six hours yes which is insane and this is so that is so you can make your own because I had given you some of my seeds because I grow weed and they're growing outside right now. And they're growing outside, <laughs> and you were like, "Yeah, I'm gonna roll your weed into a canagar or whatever." So I got, I also rolled <laughs> us up a canagar that no we can smoke on, on no camera way. using the canagar thing that they gave me. Oh, and dude, this is insane! So we can try this. I'm. It might be a failure. I don't know. Let's fucking. Oh, and I also brought some of the weed leaves that I am growing, so you can roll your own yeah. canagar as well. Dude, are you kidding? This is so sick. And I just want to say congratulations. Seriously, it's awesome to see you not driving Lyft and Uber anymore and to see you growing. Got a producer over here. It's it's amazing. And this is amazing. Yeah, shout out Griffin. He's new to the podcast, but not only incredibly uh, excited to have him here, but he is very, very good at what he does and you will all meet him very soon. Very soon. This is un-fucking-believable. Did you roll this one? I tried. That's my, I, that's my first attempt. I also brought another one. I rolled. So this is what your Canagar looks like. They gave a, they have the smaller ones and the yeah. bigger ones, but I did the big one. You're more than welcome to use that anytime you want. Uh, <laughs> so I did a couple this of these. This is insane. So we can spark that one. You can smoke a puff and go away. I'm trying to think. One of these I did. Without oh my God. All right, I did this one. We'll do this one. You can spark that one up if you want. <laughs> Should we smoke it? It might be a little wet. So they give you these things. This is gonna. We're taking up a lot of podcasting. That is but, got nowhere to be. So they got a... Uh, Oh, in that bag. That yeah. Okay. So those are those are weed leaves that are like in a no. You can oh. take it. Whatever. They're, those are like hemp leaves that are like shaped like a paper. So they're like already. Pr they're like pretty much just the cannabis leaf like this. But they cut them and they like glue them together and they're already like a paper, like a hemp paper. And that's what these are rolled with. All of these are rolled with that. Shout out Native Leaf Co. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Native Native Leaf. They hooked it up too. 
Shout out one more time. What was the name of it? Why am I blanking? That's Purple Rose Supply. Shout out Purple Rose Supply. Thank this you guys. Unreal. Seriously. So it was Thank like, you. it was crazy. So so yeah, to finish the story, at Danny's, you were telling me about the Kanagar. And I had like, I just went on their Instagram and like followed them and was talking to them for a second. And they're like, we'll send you stuff. And I was like, I'm about to be on a podcast in a couple of weeks. Can you send me one extra? And so they brought you that one. That is unbelievable. And, Thank you so much. Yeah. And so that little clear thing is glue. Like it's like a, it's like a, like, like, like food grade weed glue. Yeah, exactly. That's what I used for this. So you like, you crank it and then you like paint it and then it just like, it can help it. So these stick. And oh my God. So in an honor of my second appearance on this is an experiment, I'm going to try to smoke a cigar. <laughs> I can't even say cigar. I'm going to try to smoke a cigar on camera, which is a can of gar. Dude, and this is so fucking cool. We have to at least, at least spark this one. You can spark that later, whatever. That's a yeah, big boy. That's holy uh, shit. And yeah, congratulations, man. This is huge. Like This is unbelievable. Uh, oh, dude, you're the fucking coolest. Hmm. By the way, my mom says hi. She Shout loves out Bradley's you. mom. She made me. This right here. Yeah, I can set it there. Whatever. We can. We got to rearrange. You can things see here. it. So, <laughs> my attempt at rolling a canagar, and uh, so yeah. Shout out Bradley's mom. Shout out anyone from Michigan. Uh, they're the sweetest people. Straight I'm. Uh, I'm also from Michigan. Bradley's from Michigan, and uh, his mom makes this amazing macrame. Uh, and I was like looking at Etsy for a while to get some macrame for my house, whatever. And I I don't know why she just, I don't know why she made it or she, she had a bunch or we were talking about it. I yeah, think I saw did. it at your house. I think I saw yours first. Yeah. Yeah. I have a few. I got one there, one over there, yeah, one up so there, dope. all they're over so my dope. bedroom. Put in B-roll of the macrame. Uh, we we'll put one of my mom holding it right. Yeah, yeah. Do like yeah. a Etsy. Uh, does she have an Etsy store? No, but she, maybe I'll make her one and not tell her and we'll see if we can just get her people to start buying them. Dude, you should. You should definitely support Bradley's mom's macrame. It's amazing. And it was weird because she made one without even knowing what like the aesthetic was of my house. And it fits my house perfectly. It's like the same colorway and it's it's beautiful. And it was like, it was weird because I hadn't really done much to my house like decoration wise. And she brought this, or Bradley brought the macrame from her to my house. From and Detroit. Yeah, from Detroit all the way to LA. And it it definitely like spiced up my house in a way. And I've started to get more and more art ever since she did. She was like the, the initial piece of art on my wall. And Rachel Levine, the impetus. Yo, that's awesome. <laughs> that is so crazy. This is, I'm like still in shock. This is the fucking coolest thing in the world. Yeah, man. I got to do it. I don't know. I thought it was perfect. Bring you a little gift. This is unreal. Like, and tying it into the cigars from the last And you're, you're, you're smoking it. You, you've learned how to smoke a, a cigar. Is that, I think that's it. I don't know. That's you're, Are you you're supposed doing to inhale it. a can of gar? Is that part of it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cigars don't inhale people. We learned that on the last one. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh my god, I was doing the. You can insert that clip in there. And Mickey had like Mickey was flying through those cigars. He loved them. Oh my god! Shut now up. we have them every uh, every Shabbat. I saw there's one over there too. Yeah, my buddy came and wanted to try one. Didn't get too far. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know the cigar life. I don't know. You got someone needs to teach me. It's fun on a podcast. Yeah, it's fun like playing some golf. I don't play golf, but I'd, I'd, I'm mad. This would be more fun playing golf. Well, there you go. Bring the Canagars to the next one. Let's go play some golf. I'm, I'm with it. Actually, have you been to the Los Feliz Nine? No. You haven't been to that? It's seriously right over in Los Feliz. It's uh, it's like the size of like two football fields. It's such a little one. It's just oh, a pitch shit. and a putt. You can just go and like the sandwich has amazing root. I'm sorry. The, the place has amazing Reuben sandwiches. I got I got a little ahead of myself on that. <laughs> Is that and, where the name for the AI came from? Yeah. No, no, not <laughs> that. That's amazing. No, not that. Uh and then, but you can just like get like, if you drink, get like a six pack of beer and just walk around it with your friends. And it's just super fun, man. It's so it's dope. So sick. Like, Let's Danny, go play. I've been there with Danny before. It's super cool. Oh, I'd love to see Danny play golf. He plays, man. I'm sure. He's super good, actually. He's probably got the craziest outfit too while he does. He didn't, he didn't fit out the day I went with him, but he definitely has a good swing. He knows what he's doing. Oh, I think man. he grew up playing golf with his dad or something. I, don't I know. believe that. Mm. All right, Danny, let's go play some golf. For real, Danny. Cool Man. thing is with this, just so you know, I did roll it with some CBD because I didn't know how long we'd be smoking it. So it's a little uh, not so potent. I, that is so okay. I'm, I I smoke a lot still, but I, I can't smoke the way I used to. I don't, not, I don't like that. I don't like to be too high. Yeah. I like the smoking, I think, more than I like the high after a certain threshold. Yeah. Um. So like now I'll just take like a couple hits and yeah. get, I try to get weed that's like no more than 26%. 
Dude, that's what, okay. So that's what this is the Indian weed that I grew that's in here. So like, mm. I, I grew this. So my friend went hiking in India and brought back these seeds from India, and like the weed is like the original weed. It's like unchanged, ungenetically modified, like just trash weed. But it's so good because you can smoke and it smells fucking insane. Yeah, it does. It has like it, a cool, a different scent. It doesn't yeah, smell like sweet. gas. Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah, like herby. It's so cool. Yeah, I've had many ounces of that. Oh man, I should. I, I uh, bring- dude, I but, am not worried. I have. <laughs> I got you. you Don't worry, I got you. I want you to roll a can of gar of it too. Uh, but what was I going to say? I also mix this with CBD buds from Dad Grass. I think they like sell buds of CBD. And so what I'll do is I'll just like mix it 50 50. So it's like already cut and then it's this. And so you can just sit there and smoke and like, and that's how you treat it like a cigar too. Yeah, man. Without being burner. Yeah, exactly. Well, that was the thing. The first time I rolled a can of gar, like a a week ago when they sent me it, I was like, I'm going to try this. And I was just like a little bit in and it was already high. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I want to be able to just keep smoking it. Yeah, man. They're, I mean, people roll them. They're fucking huge. Oh my it's God. Unbelievable. I saw a huge ones. Yeah. On the website. I bet there's even bigger than these that, they, that you can do. I this is perfect though. Cause this, you also want to be able to like not carry around a five pound joint. <laughs> I mean, guard. some people want to, that's true to each their own. Well, Bradley, I also have another gift. If you're trying to turn up on the weed, uh, God. we're going to gift number two. You are like fucking Santa. This is, it looks sus, hella sus. This is Rick Simpson oil. RSO, uh, baby. RSO. No uh, so Bradley said he used to take RSO back in the day, like early on. Before I'd go to school every morning, so my eyes wouldn't blink. Yeah, so he would do that. And I'm also wearing glasses in Bradley's honor, too. I wanted to. Dude, I you're to the that. fucking yeah, I needed, man. I needed to wear the glasses on the podcast. They're pretty similar to that. Yeah, I like your shades. I need I like- to get the ones that are a little more transparent for podcast situations. But yeah, yeah, Bradley had told me he had been uh, had done RSO when he was younger and stuff. So I grow hella weed. I love growing weed. And like I have just so much of it. And so I made Rick Simpson oil for him. And that's what it is. So it's if people don't know Rick Simpson oil, and you might be able to tell them more than I can, but it's like super concentrated. It's like the entire weed plant. So like what I do is I pick the buds and the leaves and everything, and I just soak it in high proof alcohol extract all of that out and then you cook it in like a crock pot and like reduce it down into that tar that's right there. Yeah. So it's, you're pretty much just taking like a ton of weed plants and like compressing it into one. And this stuff you'll take like uh, a grain of rice. Yeah. It's kind of like what, what I was originally told to take and it'll get, it'll fuck you up. Oh yeah. It's super fucks you it's up. It's so good. But it also has a lot of like the medicinal properties of what yeah. cannabis has. So it's kind of a uh, win-win in that regard. It's Man, more medicinal. Amazing. Yeah. And I've, yeah. I've stressed this or not stressed. I've told people kind of my story with why I smoke weed and I how that started. I was wondering if you did, if you had. I, I have like, I don't, I think it's been a while, but I have a disease called convergence disorder. It's when your eyes don't work together to form an image. And my brain's reaction to that, that pretty much non-focusing. It's like if you're trying to focus a camera, but every time you go to focus it, you go a little too far mm. and then a little too far. So it's like, it's just, it, you can never fully get there you never told me what it was that's cool i didn't know that yeah so like if you if you see this is the best way i can describe it if i show you this like a a cross what i'm seeing is this so my eyes my left eye is picking up this hand my right eye is picking up this hand so like if you shut one eye everything kind of moves a little Uh i'm seeing both of those images but constantly my brain is like trying to rack them into focus. Yeah. So it's not even like a clear two images. It's always moving. Whoa. So like reading music growing up, I couldn't see the difference between the staff lines. Oh, damn. So reading a book, I couldn't see, I would be reading one line and then the next letter would be three lines down, but I didn't know that. Whoa. So they would have to like blow up my papers and have a lot of space in between yeah. words. Yeah. So there's like things that they could do, but my brain's reaction was to blink. That was, mm-hmm. that was, it's how your brain re- or your uh, reset. eyes reset. Oh, okay. So growing up, I was like this all the yeah. time and smoked weed for the first time when I was like 13, 14. And I just remember having this moment of like panic, like something was wrong because I didn't have that feeling for a second. Whoa. And then I realized I was like, this is, it, it's not that it's curing me. It's that I think it's kind of hazing up the the connection between my eyes and my brain a little bit. Yeah. And making them not feel like they have to focus. Oh, cool. So I still have the same issues, but not the reset. Yeah, yeah. Like you can kind of calm down a little bit and just kind of be with it in a way. Yeah, yeah. It's just the blinking goes from 150% to 30%. Okay. And when I I have days where I'm blinking a lot, the worst part about it, obviously outside of the fact that you're just blinking all day, is it's so tiring. Oh, I'm sure, man. 
It's yeah. I mean, just exhausting. So you feel fatigued, actually physically fatigued? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll, day? It, a day that it's bad, I'm asleep by 8 p.m. and I can't oh, keep my bro. eyes open. That's not good. But this shit, I my parents growing up were, they weren't very pro-weed at first, mm-hmm. but once my my mom and my dad kind of saw the difference, once because that was that was the most... That was the worst thing that that was part of my life at that point. That was my biggest uh, crippling moment or mm-hmm. crippling whatever. And once they saw it stop, there was no part of them that could say not to do that because they understood th- the scale yeah, and how much it outweighed the fact that I was a little high. Yeah. And now I'm obviously at the point where I've smoked enough where nobody knows. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm always high and I get my shit done. It's part of your... Smoking now kind of to, to help with that? Ways? Oh, okay. I, I, I love it too. Yeah. And for anybody who's going to go say, oh, you, you're you not smoking for that, that is 100% part of it. Yeah. But I also, I, I've kind of, um, Seth Rogen said this recently. He said, smoking weed is like wearing shoes. You can walk around and not wear shoes and you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. You can still do all the things you're, you need to do, but it's a little more comfortable to wear shoes. It's, yeah, man. Life's just going to be a little easier. It doesn't make it a crutch. Yeah, exactly. And I'm truly a big believer in if you can if you can have something like this that has the benefits and you're not getting any less work done, you're not yeah. any any less good to people, you're not, you know, if it's not changing you like that, then yeah. do you. Do you. And that's, and that could be with anything too. Like we've talked about so much today, like with, whether it, uh, the shrooms or this or stuff, Mm -hmm. but like, even like people can meditate or people just pray even like they might pray and feel comfortable and stuff. Like there's so many things we can do in our days that like work for us. Like this stuff definitely worked for you from what it proved. And like, but some people that might not, some people that might make them paranoid and they don't even want to touch it. So it's like, I mean, we're all different, man. Like some people are allergic to peanuts. It's like, you just can't ever, you can't give like the cookie cutter way to live your lifestyle on so many diverse millions and billions and millions of different humans that are here. Like, yeah. We have our own set of everything individually. That's also one of those things that going back to the mushrooms that I feel like helps me realize is when I'm in that place and I'm watching the world happen, it's a lot easier for me to realize that every person I'm looking at has their own. They have just as much going on as I do. They have just as important of a life, important of a family and everything. And it helps bring a little bit more compassion to it. Yeah, man. And I'm. I've heard this on many podcasts and stuff, but it's like the, the worst thing that happened to those people is the worst thing that ever happened to them. So like, it doesn't matter that like maybe your life is harder in in perspective, but like their life is hard too. Even if it isn't, is like, if you're competing, it's not on the same level or whatever, or vice versa. There's going to be so much more worse than you. Like even your Uber uh, rider girl that freaked out or whatever, like she probably had some stuff going on apparently. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) So it's like, yeah, you can't, you just have to just try to sympathize and or empathize with that. So my great grandma, who was my best friend, my up until the day she passed, which was a few years ago, was a Holocaust survivor. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that she always stressed to me is I can never compare the worst things in my life to hers because they're, they're both, have the same amount of impact as far as percent. You can't go off of of the actual situation. Obviously, hers was more detrimental yeah. than 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 anything I've ever been through. That doesn't mean it's not going to affect me in a very similar way, or 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 it's just as bad for me. Yeah, whatever my situations are, and I kind of can't really fight that if somebody like that's telling you. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. She has a different perspective for sure. She's a bomb. Oh, She's a bomb. That's awesome, man. This was fucking amazing. Yeah, man. This is so great. <laughs> This is so fun. I just had to give you the shout out with some of this stuff. But Dude, yeah. you're the best. This was this was by far the best guest gifts I've ever gotten on the podcast. <laughs> More gifts to come. Uh, when is the new studio happening? I we move in in three weeks, wow. so we have a two week little rollover. I would get, yeah, you're gonna have to move to you. You're oh, actually yeah. moving houses too. Oh, and I have so like more shit than anybody needs yeah especially in the studio it's the, fucking crazy the purge will be good though man purging is yeah. such a good thing like i'm ready that. for it oh, i try to do that like a few times a year just like get rid of stuff and it like it feels good i feel physically lighter when i just get rid of things like absolutely and there's there's just like there's so many things in this house where i see it i, I let myself know i'm aware that I no longer use this and no longer need it, but I have no reason to toss it. Yeah. This is giving me that reason. It's like a forced reset. Yeah, man. One less thing to move. And I'm moving into a place where the things around me aren't as important. I have so many people and so much love around me there that I really, I'd rather have that room in my life for, for the people to step in that house than for things. Yeah. That's huge. I like that for it. That's sick. Man, I can't wait. 
Awesome, man. dude. Thank you so much for coming to do this. Let's, uh, yeah. once I get this new spot, let's do another, obviously. Well, many, many more. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm done. This is fun. This I, is so great. Yeah. What, what is, what can people expect to see from, from you? What's coming up? What should they go look at? Uh, if you want to follow my Instagram stuff, probably the most clout one is, uh, Flostradamus. <laughs> if you want to go there, uh, also Ruben.audio is the URL for the AI company. Uh, I also have another company called smile S M L E uh, S M I L E. It's a, uh, these are, you can just go to S M L E dot M O R E on Instagram. If you're trying to learn about mushrooms. Uh, yeah, man, I don't know. Just look, look for me on the internet. Try to Google it. Shout out Bradley. Do you have any shows coming up? <laughs> yeah. I, so next Friday I play the midway San Francisco. This will probably not be out by then. Yeah. Uh, but then I'm doing a huge Asia, Asia tour for all of July. So I'm going to be oh, man. like everywhere in Asia, which I'm stoked for to get more fake Gucci and fake Rolexes, which I'm stoked on. Anywhere you're really excited to hit that you haven't been in a while or haven't been in general. I mean, like I just said, get the fake stuff. So I'm going to Shanghai the last day and I extended my day. Oh, I'm sorry. Extended my trip a couple extra days to like get some more bootleg stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm also going back to Korea for the first time since the pandemic. So I'm excited oh, to be unreal. there. Unreal. Man, what yeah. a what a life. I know. I'm very blessed. Feeling good, man. Yeah, but you work hard. I that's, do that's work That's the thing so that I don't want anybody to, to look over is like, I, I thought I worked hard and I do. But then I met you and I met somebody who, who has... 900 verticals and not one of them are left behind that's different there's a lot of people with, who have a lot of jobs not a lot of people who keep those jobs going and work hard at all of them and have passion yeah for all of it that's the main thing is the passion and thank you for saying that like of uh, some of them do get left behind though it's hard to do like all of them 100 percent. but no relationship is always 50 50 as long as you're going back and that that is swaying yeah then you're in the right right no, place that's what, that's what it feels like man i'm and it's funny because i don't really like put a lot of this stuff out forward to the public that much like i'm not like like the ruben things and stuff like i'll talk about it on the podcast and stuff yeah. but i'm like i the flaw stuff is the most forward-facing thing i do but i'm doing like so many other things behind the scenes all yeah. the time like helping people and stuff so yeah man i love you i appreciate you, you. and uh yeah. yeah. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank Woo. you for listening. It's a vibe. Go check out Floss Tradamus. If if you're using the AI, tag him. I'm yeah, yeah. sure you want to hear some of this stuff. Yeah, no, seriously. Uh check out Ruben.audio, tap in with us. Uh we can help you with AI. Make you you a model or make you help you out with that. And whatever you're listening in, all the links will be below. So go go click on them, check them out. If you don't do music, this will be a really cool way for you to um have a nice barrier to entry to get into the world too. Mm -hmm. So if not singing or not being able to sing was, was stopping you from getting in the game, what's your excuse now? Exactly. Got nothing. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And to everybody out there, I'm Floster Thomas and this is an experiment. Yeah, it is. Bye everybody. Love you. Later. The experience is the experiment. <laughs>